My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we all know that when you do good, there is good that you will reap. So when you have done something good, we all want to hear about the goodness that will come to us as a result of that in this world and then the next. So we feel good about it and we would love to hear about paradise, about Jannah, about how good it's going to be in the grave, about how nice it's going to be as our souls depart the bodies. Beautiful. However, very few people like to hear about the evil effects of sin in the lives of the believers. Why do we say the lives of the believers? Because the believers are the ones who are within the test. The disbelievers are not in the test. A person writing an examination is enrolled in the school. That's when they will have the tests one by one. Those who are not enrolled, they're not going to have the same tests. Their tests will be light. So Allah says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل. Don't let the fact that the disbelievers have some beautiful moments on earth and the joy that they have and the fact that they are treading the earth in such happiness. Don't let that deceive you. That is provision for a short period of time. Subhanallah, they're not in the exam room, so they will not get the same tests. You have entered the exam room, my beloved believers. So therefore, Allah will test you one after the other. And he tells you that when you do good, we will give you good in this world and the next. When you do bad, it will have an effect in this world and the next. I want to spend the next 20 minutes speaking about how a person is affected by the evil that he or she does. The first point I want to start with is a verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says loud and clear, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ Whoever turns away from our reminder, whoever is not bothered about our command, our instruction, we give them a life that is very, very narrow, a life that is full of depression, a life that is filled with sadness, a life that is filled with anxiety and stress. That's what Allah says. So the first effect of turning away from the command of Allah or not fulfilling the, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engaging in the prohibitions. Remember there are two things to disobey Allah one of two ways. Either you don't do what he has asked you to do. Number one or you do what he told you not to do two ways. A person who stays away from prayer, for example, a person who does not give his zakah, a person who does not dress appropriately, those are sins for not having done what Allah instructed you to do. Then a person who commits adultery, a person who gambles, a person who eats interest, and so many other sins where Allah told you don't do this, and then one does it, that is the other type of sin. So Allah says, whoever turns away from us, from our reminder, the reminder includes both of these. We firstly give them a life that is filled with all forms of difficulty and hardship. Now one might say, how do I know that what I'm going through right now is a result of my sin or it's just an ordinary test as a result of elevation of status? There is one main way of telling. When you are a believer who is concerned to obey Allah and to please Allah, you accept what Ever comes in your direction with pleasure. That's what happens. You are not depressed about it. If you suffered, your home was taken away from you, you were evicted, you're on the road, you don't have food, you still find on your tongue, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I'm in a much better condition than others. So you are not depressed about it to the degree that you become a failure in every way, especially mentally. You lose everything and you have such depression that you begin to question Allah. In that case, perhaps it may be the result of something you've done that you were not supposed to do or something you did not do that you were supposed to do. But Allah says, 
when we catch you, we will not let go. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us even in the Quran and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he gives us time. He gives us time up to what is known as ajal. Ajal means prescribed time. You want to commit mischief, Allah says you will taste the effect of that mischief. But when we decide to punish you seriously, then that would be the prescribed time of the end. When the fixed time of Allah comes, it's not going to be delayed. And obviously death is something that is never delayed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. Another very, very strong effect of sin, very clear effect of sin is the knowledge you have of the religion begins to diminish. You start forgetting what you know. You learned the Quran, you learned something, you learned a few ahadith, you learned rules, you learned regulations. You begin to lose it as a result of sins that are committed, as a result of not fulfilling your prayer, as a result of not fulfilling the obligation Allah has placed upon you, as a result of eating haram, as a result of uh, that which will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being done, you start forgetting. And when we forget the knowledge, guess what happens? You lose khashiyah, you lose concentration, and you lose the beautiful taste of worship. So a person who is engro engrossed in a sinful life, he doesn't want to pray. It's such a burden. It is such a big burden. He, doesn't, he or she doesn't want to dress appropriately. It is such a big burden. Notice I said he or she, because it's also he, not only she. You know, people think that rules regarding clothing more for women. The answer or should, the reality is, do you know a lot of the time some of the young boys wear tight clothing they're not supposed to be wearing. They show half their backsides. They're not supposed to be the case. They want to show off their chest saying that it's only from the navel to the knee. That's not true. You need to cover respectfully in a dignified manner as a believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So it becomes so hard to dress properly because your life is filled with sin. Subhanallah, knowledge is gone. You're not, you find it so difficult to make wudu, like it's a burden because you're doing something wrong. That's the reason. So Allah takes away the sweetness of acts of worship from a person who sins. And remember, I'm not going to go into every sin and what it is because the list of sins is Endless, endless meaning so many things people could do. Sometimes a deed that appears to be good can become sinful if the intention is dirty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cleanse our intention. So to be, to have knowledge snatched away, to have the sweetness of worship snatched away, then one sin leads to another. When you start committing sin, initially it doesn't feel like it's something so serious. Or should I say, initially it feels like, you know what, this was just a one-off, I'm not going to do it again. When you do it again and a third time, it becomes easier to sin. That's a result of the evil effects of the sins that a believer engages in. It becomes such that you just feel like carrying on. From this sin, you commit another one and then you say, by the way, I am committing that, let me just go into here. I went into the nightclub, now there's alcohol. Let me just drink. Now that I'm drinking, there's a bit of drugs. Let me just do that. Now that that has happened, the, you know, the adultery comes with it. Let me go. Before you know it, you are drowning in so many different sins that you feel that you are now at the end because you are depressed, you are stressed, you are sad. So much has happened. And at the same time, you actually feel within you that, you know what? There is so much of darkness in my life. This is why the door of Tawbah is opened. I know I will speak about it towards the end, but I need to mention it just in case someone dozes off near the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Because this is a topic people don't like to hear. We always talk about, you know, goodness. Today we're talking about punishment. Today we're talking about how your evil deeds have an effect on you. Because we are struggling, my brothers and sisters. Here's another one. Do you know that when you seek Allah's forgiveness and you have come onto the right page with Allah, He opens the doors of sustenance, rizq for you in all different ways. The minute you turn your back on Allah, the f one of the first things He snatches away is your sustenance, no baraka, no blessing in it. You might say, well, my sustenance was written 500 years before I was born. Correct. It was also written that you were going to sin. And as a result of that, you were going to suffer. So the evil effects of sin, my brothers and sisters, before they set in, 
Let's ask Allah's forgiveness. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah says Allah will not punish them for as long as they are seeking forgiveness. So if you seek forgiveness while you are genuinely asking Allah's forgiveness, He says, I'm not going to punish you. I'm merciful enough to say, okay, fine, we've heard this. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So Allah takes away sustenance. Today, people, what we tend to find is because we are in a desperate situation, maybe we don't have wealth, maybe we're struggling in business, we tend to think it's okay to resort to that which is prohibited, that, you know, Allah will forgive us. So you want to eat interest, you want to do that which is haram, you want to perhaps steal from someone, you want to deceive someone, you want to just go and do a deal that is not acceptable Islamically. You might have a figure, but you don't have the blessing. You might have a large sum, but it will come about with no goodness. Allah takes what He wants through sickness. Allah takes through damage. Allah takes through accidents, loss, all this. If you haven't paid your zakah, the sin that is actually perpetrated, the result of it is Allah takes that money anyway. I'd rather give it willingly. You know, that money is supposed to be out of your system. I rather give it willingly than for Allah to extract it from me in a way that I looked at as something, some disaster. So this is why be charitable. Similarly, if you've earned haram, it's not actually legitimate for you. Allah will take it away. At some point, it's going to go. In what? In all sorts of waste. It will result in the person eating haram. So your energy that you've derived is actually made from haram means it will only be encouraged to do that which is haram. So if someone's wealth is haram, they've been eating it, they'll love to go and commit adultery, to go and tamper with perhaps uh, something that is not allowed, maybe to go to the clubs, maybe to do that which is prohibited, and the money goes. Before you know it, where's my million? Well, how did you earn the million? If it was hard earned with your sweat, perhaps you would have been more conscious of where it was spent. But when it is not, and when you've got it through clandestine means, what do you expect when it comes to spending it? It's going to go. So remember in Islam, we are taught more important than the figure is the blessing of the Almighty. And that is clean and clear. Allah blesses people. My brothers and sisters, be happy with the test that Allah has tested you with. You cannot, when you see the examination paper decide that you know what sorry invigilator this question here i don't want it i'll only answer question two and three number one not for me you fail your test same applies allah chose your paper for you you have to look at it and say alhamdulillah i'm going to attempt every question try my best and subhanallah you will succeed by the help of allah and his mercy but you need to be on the right page let's move on similarly when it comes to the issue of Sinning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the gifts of Allah that He has given you, He starts taking them away. So Allah gave you something. You were happy, happy in your marriage, happy with your children. Everything was happening cool and mashallah. You know, as we say, everything was flowing, subhanallah. And suddenly, when we started disobeying Allah in our own ways, Allah says, okay, I give you a chance. Are you turning? No, you're not turning. Are you turning? Allah shows you one or two signs. He gives you a few hints. And after that, you know what? It starts. There's no happiness in my home. There's a problem. My wife of how many years? Suddenly I've got a huge issue. And suddenly this, and I'm stressed. Like I told you, there is a difference between the test of Allah and the punishment of Allah. Big difference. The test of Allah, you are happy with it. The punishment of Allah, you are angry. You are so cross, upset. It destroys your emotional uh, balance completely. That is the punishment of Allah without a doubt. Without a doubt. We need to go back and thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. I really thank you that you've chosen for me these tests. Ya Allah, help me through my problems, my issues. So when we see the ni'am or the gifts of Allah being snatched away from us one by one, we need to go back and look at what we've done that we were not supposed to do or what we did not do that we were supposed to do and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
that when a person does good deeds, Allah loves the person. And Allah announces in the angels, Oh my angels, I love this person. I want you to love this person. The angels begin to love that person and the angels make an announcement for those on earth who are pious and the others on earth that, Oh, Allah, that, oh people, Allah loves such and such a person. As a result, we have loved this person. We want you to love this person as well. So this mahabba and the love for that person is widespread. It's a sign of closeness to Allah. The opposite is true. When a person sins, hatred develops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes upset, angry. People start disliking that person after they like them. Or maybe they didn't know them, but no one wants to look at his face. This person is so as pretty or beautiful or handsome as they may look outwardly. No one wants to interact with them. Why? It's the evil effect of your sin, my brother, my sister. That's what happens. No one wants to talk to you. No one wants to interact with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from among those. This is a very, very important point as well. Similarly, things become difficult. You know, when you're close to Allah, Allah opens, Allah opens the doors. In Surah Al-Layl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believe and do good deeds and they spend and Allah loves them. What does Allah do? Allah makes them do things that will be easy. Allah makes easy for them that which is good. Allah makes easy for them the path that will earn his pleasure. But those who do evil, those who are stingy when it comes to wealth, niggardly, they do not spend, they do not give from what Allah has given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we make difficult for them. Or we make easy for them the path of difficulty. Wherever there's difficulty, Allah says, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ usra." We make easy for that person the path of difficulty, hardship. That's the only path that they follow. This is a result of the sins of the person. And I've explained to you both types of sin. Then another very, very interesting, powerful, scary point. Very scary meaning it's something that will, you know, cause alarm. If you do not fear Allah, you begin to fear everything besides Allah. If you have transgressed against Allah, you begin to become worried about the people. You begin to become worried about the rest. Every time you have the fear of Allah and you have fulfilled the instruction of Allah, Allah suffices for you. Allah is sufficient. You have the fear of Allah. You're doing everything correct. There's no harm. You're not worried. You come into the masjid, Allahu Akbar. Your concentration is salah is to its maximum, to the best you can. The reason is you have nothing to worry about. What did you do? Nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I come here. I'm such a happy person, Allahu Akbar. And that's it. I don't fear anyone besides Allah. You will always have a person saying a thing or two that's negative, but none of us can be saved from that because it's part of the test of Allah for both the one who was spoken about and the one who's speaking. But when a person sins, they are worried. They're not fearing, fearing of Allah. They are not fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They come, they, hey, what will this person say? Did that one see me? A person who steals, for example, he thinks that someone must have seen him. How, you know, this person might know. That person might find out. A person who has stolen, a person who commits adultery, a person who has done anything wrong, he's worried about humankind more than he's worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a direct effect of the evil that a person does. Notice I'm still saying a believer because at the end of the day, we do believe. My brothers and sisters, like I say, I'm repeating it a second time. The doors of repentance are open always for as long as it doesn't get to the end. We are still living. We're still breathing. We haven't yet got to Sakarat. We haven't yet got to Gargara, meaning the point of death of each one of us. And the world has not yet come to an end. So we can turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, the more we become conscious of Allah, the less we will fear the rest. And the less we are conscious of Allah, the more we begin to fear the rest. You know, a very, very powerful point as well is when a person begins to sin, the devil tampers with them more. 
هل أنبئكم على من تنزل الشياطين تنزل على كل أفاك أثيم سورة الشعراء Allah says do you want to know who the jinn come in trouble do you want to know who the shayateen come in trouble they trouble those who are liars and those who are sinful Afakin Athim, you want to lie without even thinking, don't worry. You might get away with it for a while, but the jinn will come and trouble you, shaitan will come and trouble you, you start hearing things. Don't you read Surah Al Jinn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. You start getting waswasa, you don't know what's going on, you start hearing a voice. All that is because, my brother, my sister, it is the effect of sins that are committed. Turn to Allah, all that will go away. Turn to Allah correctly, all that will go away. Subhanallah, eat that which is halal. If a person eats that which is haram, there is a skittle effect until the person lies depressed. Skittle effect. And that might take 30 years. How long? 30 years. We ate haram 30 years back for a period of two years. It affected us 30 years down the line. Unless we sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the third time I'm saying this. Seeking the forgiveness of Allah is extremely important. So my brothers and sisters, if we would like to be protected from shaitan, from his waswasa, from jinn, from being affected by magic and everything else, you need to be obedient to Allah. Fulfill your commands to Allah. A lot of the times people who are affected by all this, you ask them, do you read salah? They say no, sometimes. Would you fulfill the salah? No, four times a day. Well, the fifth time the devil is actually affecting you. That's what it is. May Allah forgive us. And I ask Allah to grant cure to all those who are struggling and suffering. When we say, have you read the Quran? Have you read Ayatul Kursi? The answer is no. Well, how do you expect to be helped? Allah is telling you, here are bodyguards. I'm giving them to you. All you got to do is open the door and let them in. You haven't even bothered to open the door. It will take you two minutes to read Ayatul Kursi. The door will be open. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, a very important point that we learn. Then I have two more points that I'd like to talk about. Number one. A person who sins and doesn't turn to Allah, one of the effects is Allah gives them a very bad death. Very difficult, very bad death. And it's called Su'ul Khatima, which means the end will be very bad. What is a bad death? My brothers and sisters, a bad death is not when you have been shredded to pieces. That's not a bad death. A bad death is to die in a condition that you have forgotten about Allah. That's a bad death. And a good death is even if you are you know, shredded to pieces. I'm sorry to give that example. But if you died remembering Allah, wow. If you died on that day, you had read your salah, subhanallah. If you died on that day, you asked Allah's forgiveness, alhamdulillah. If you died on that day, you opened the Quran in the morning and you read half a page. Wow, good news to you. This, that's a good death. But when a person goes far away from Allah, very, very distant, the last time you opened the Quran was by mistake last Ramadan because I was too embarrassed. The last time you fulfilled your five daily salah was sometime last year in Ramadan. What's that? My brothers and sisters, what type of a death do you expect to have if you were to die right here, right now? Subhanallah. Well, I think we'd all be lucky, wouldn't we? Mashallah. Here, Jumu'ah, beautiful timing. Uh, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about to fulfill salah. Well, that's a good sign. Some are not bothered to read Jumu'ah. Some, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. They only come for Salatul Eid. Subhanallah. The moon is seen twice a year. Subhanallah. This Eid and that Eid, let that not happen. The last point I want to raise my brothers and sisters is we always do not realize that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us about the punishment of the grave, the punishment of the hereafter as a direct result of the evil that one may commit. This is a topic people don't like to hear. I can't remember when last I heard about the scorpions in the grave, when last I heard about the grave narrowing and crushing the chest and the bones of those who are in it. I can't remember when last I heard of the snakes in the grave. I can't remember when last I heard of the screaming in the grave, such that the Prophet ﷺ says if man could hear it, they would not want to be buried. That's the hadith. No one likes to hear this. It's the effect of sin. And as for the akhirah, and the punishment of hellfire. People don't like to hear it. 
when people will be ripped to pieces, burnt, and made to be drinking that which is absolutely boiling, which destroys the intestines completely, and which is then renewed in order to taste the punishment and whatnot. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Not an iceberg, actually, because the ice would help you. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, the biggest gift we have is tawbah. Seek Allah's forgiveness. And then smile and have hope in the mercy of Allah. Smile, have hope. Life is not just depressing. No, it's not. It will be test. It will be test after test, definitely. It will be filled with challenges. But by the help of Allah, you will get through every one of those challenges. It might take a year, two years, or 10 years, or 30 years. Trust me, by the help of Allah, you will get through it. You will. Keep going. Never lose hope. Until the end. Right up to the end. وَاعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Rabb. Keep on worshipping your Rabb without losing hope, without becoming despondent, right up to the point of your death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah bless us. Like I said, the door of tawbah is open. We seek Allah's forgiveness. We will be protected from all this. أَقُولُ قَوْلِي هَذَا وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِينَ محمد. اقرأ كتاب الله ترق جنانه وتن العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روي القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان